Hello, welcome to Joy News at 6. The news is live on Joy 99.7 FM and hits 103.9 FM in Accra. In Kumasi, we are on Love 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions, including Volta Premier Ho, Amenuveva FM Aflao, Lolonyo FM Hohoi and Kekeli FM Ho. Get radio, TV and online content on the MyJoyOnline.com interactive app for Android and iOS devices. Coming up, former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Dapa granted bail with surety by the Office of the Special Prosecutor as steps are underway to unseal assets declared by her. So there must be publication of the assets and liabilities that have been declared. In business. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, expresses concern about individuals hoarding huge amount of foreign currencies in their homes. As short measures are being instituted to deal with monies outside banks. Details on the Joy Business Report. Also, two students of Addis Adel College face disciplinary action after viral video showed them engaging in what authorities say amounts to violent conduct. And the Ghana Water Company Limited justifies more than 300% hike in water tariffs citing high treatment cost due to Galamsey. We feel that the tariff should go up to 34, the 334% because uh, if you pollute the, the water and the cost goes high, why don't you pay for it? Because you are making money. And we begin our build-up to the August 26 NPP primaries with a spotlight on Kwabne J. Japong who believes the party needs a new face to break the eight. A pair of clean hands. A leader to reconnect with our base and end the trust of Ghanaians. I am Amir Sinyamiche Thompson. Details now. The Office of the Special Prosecutor is expected to unseal assets declared by former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Abnadapa. She was arrested yesterday and interrogated for hours by the Special Prosecutor. Investigators from the anti graft Agency also searched her residence afterwards. This follows reports she was hoarding millions of dollars plus unspecified amounts of other currencies in her house. The monies came to light in court documents filed by state prosecutors who were prosecuting her house helps for allegedly stealing $1 million in sum. Here's a news desk report. The Office of the Special Prosecutor on 24th July 2024 arrested the former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Abinadapa together with her husband and interrogated them for hours. The investigators asked her where the monies came from, who it belonged to and why it was stashed in the house. The former sanitation minister claimed not all the monies belonged to her. After over four hours of interrogation, Madame Dapa was whisked away with security escorts to search both her cantonment official residency and that in Ablekuma. The former sanitation minister over the weekend resigned after her stolen cash news became public. The monies came to light in court documents filed by state prosecutors who were prosecuting Cecilia Dapper's house helps for allegedly stealing the amounts. Meanwhile, former Auditor General Daniel Domlevo is pushing strongly for assets declared by public officers to be published as prescribed by the Public Financial Management Act. So to be able to do that, I think the law must go a little bit further because Auditor General is not God. It is the people of the Auditor General to know whether the, de the, the declaration is complete or not. So there must be publication of the assets and liabilities that have been declared. Again, if you read uh, the PFM uh, law on asset declaration before the Constitution, it is that within two weeks of declaration, the declaration must be published for Ghanaians to see. But the Constitution has watered it down. My colleague Elton Brobe joins me with more from the OSP. Elton, what's the latest on Cecilia Daba? So the pointers we have from our source at the OSP indicate that the, the battered minister, former minister, has been granted bail. Now yesterday, they searched her official residence at Cantonment and of course at Abelimpe. Now we are told that they found something significant mm. in the two properties that were searched. And also, she's been, uh, some of her relatives have also been invited to assist in the ongoing investigation. Okay. Also, she's been given declaration of income and property forms to fill. And we are told that the OSP uh, today will update the country 
what they've done so far. Right. Thank you so much, Elton Brobe. Now, moving on, the Ghana Education Service has taken immediate action following the emergence of a disturbing video showing an act of violence involving two students of Adisadel College. The video, which has been circulating on social media, has sparked outrage and raised concerns about the safety of students within the country's educational institutions. A student had filmed holding another from the back at the neck level with the inner part of his elbow. He takes the students closer to a bank bed and hits the parlor student's head against it. This causes an immediate swell on the right cheek and blood starts to ooze out. According to a statement signed by the head of the public relations unit, Cassandra Trum Ampofo, GES is deeply concerned and strongly condemns the barbaric act by the culprits. School authorities say they have, been, they have suspended the alleged perpetrator as investigations continue. The other is also to face a disciplinary um, committee with some sanctions expected to be imposed for failing to report the incident. Now, Managing Director of the Ghana Water Company Limited, Clifford Primer, says the demand for more than 300% hike in water tariff is due to the high cost of water treatment as a result of illegal mining. Answering questions of the Public Accounts Committee, Dr. Brimer lamented the de- de- debilitating effect of Galamsey on its operations, calling on citizens to take the situation into their own hands and help end the menace. Uh, if you pollute... The, the water and the costs goes high. Why don't you pay for it? Because you are making money on one hand by polluting the water. So bring the money and come and then pay for its treatment. Water resources should be empowered to do their work. Also the buffer zone that is 100 meters. We should even make it two kilometers because for Ghanaians, if you even give two kilometers, they want to chop into the two kilometers. As to some politics now, leadership of the NPP is expected to resolve grievances of aspirants for the position of flag bearer soon. The balloting for positions in the flag bearership race hit a snag on Monday and was postponed after a pushback from majority of the aspirants who are demanding for the election modalities to be spelt out from the elections committee. The aspirants have refused to indulge the committee until their concerns have been addressed. Attempts to resolve the issue on Monday failed after nearly three Three hours of a closed door meeting. Deputy General Secretary of the NPP, Harina Mohammed, says another meeting will be held on Wednesday to resolve the issue. Uh, we did understand that uh, the balloting did not take place, but however, the meeting has been fixed on Wednesday to address some of the issues. But with regards to the modalities for this election, I don't think that there is a candidate uh, in this particular race who does not have the guidelines and rules that govern this particular election. And everybody has the right to make a point. And at any point in time, any committee that is seized with the opportunity to handle that will hear and determine. Let's stay a while longer in the NPP. Former General Secretary of the NPP, Kwabne Japon, says the party stands a better chance of winning the 2024 polls if it presents a fresh face. He will be on the ballot with nine others, but believes he stands tall and has worked hard to earn the enviable slot of flag bearer of the governing party. Joseph Akable of our political desk reports. <laughs> Kwame J. Japon is not new to the MPP flag bearer race. He was part of 17 aspirants who sought to lead the party into the 2008 polls. We, the MPP, are the tradition that believes in creating a world of plenty. His membership of the party goes as far back as its early days when he played an active role in the campaign of presidential candidates Albert Edubuahi and John Ajikum Kufo in 1992 and 1996. I'm not a newcomer. I did not join our great tradition midstream after the danger abated. When the party won power in 2000, he became President John Ajekun Kufo's press secretary. This journey has not always been smooth. Despite successfully winning the party's general secretary position in 2014, he was later suspended. This suspension has since been set aside and is back seeking to lead again. He believes the MPP needs a new face. A pair of clean hands, a leader to reconnect with our base and end the trust of Ghanaians. Mr. Japan is promising a lean and all-inclusive government if given the nod. Cut down the government pecks in Ghana right now. It appears people enjoy government pecks more than the work that they are supposed to do. 
that report by Joseph Akable. And that's it for the bulletin. In our top story, former sanitation minister Cecilia Abnadapa granted bail with surety by the office of the special prosecutor as it works to unseal assets declared by her. I'm Amisi Nyamche Thompson. Business is next on the Super Morning Show. Don't go anywhere.